Mary Meet, Annie here. This was another part of last week's Pagan Perspective topic. It was rather an interesting series of questions which had been tied in together and which intrigued me to handle on this witch's way as separate conversations. This one was about doing things right. And the way we do our circles and the way we do our magics, doing things right. How right do we have to be? I guess the question would be, who's telling us what's right? How do we know what's right? What happens if we don't do something right? One of the questions was very specific. It was about if I don't do circle correctly, do I need to be concerned of what might show up because I have not done it correctly? Am I in danger? And the one thing that was leaping into my mind that was going to be the first part of this video was anyone who thinks if they are not doing circle or right or has any insecurity about what they are doing and thinks that something like that could happen should not be casting a circle. Circle is cast from a place of your knowing, of your knowing who you are of your knowing your relationship to the elements you work with, your own personal power, your relationship to your gods, the way you relate to the world you live in. When we cast circle, we create a flow of energy. Like knows like, in the process of doing that, our confidence creates a circle of energy around us which is supremely confident. If we cast circle and we are not comfortable and we are not sure and the energy we put out is nervousness, unsurety, we create that reverberation in the air around us. I personally believe that if one is working with one's elemental guardians and with the deities that one has a relationship with and has petitioned them to align with us in our circle, they will watch over us even if we are learning to watch over ourselves. I don't think some youngster who is playing with magic is going to do supreme damage to themselves or to someone else. I just believe that the gods, those of them who are inclined to be protective, do watch over us. They appreciate that we're trying to learn and grow and do. And I do believe that we have allies that we will probably never even know who they are. And then as we mature, we have allies we have chosen to partner with, and we're very aware of the relationship that we have with them. So we do something by the book that is correct, but we're not comfortable with it. We're doing exactly what they tell us to do, whoever they is, and we're not comfortable with it. No matter how right that was at the sense of this is what you do, if it wasn't instinctively what it needed to be for you, in a way, you are at risk, but it is a psychological risk because you have built something on shaky ground and you can't build from it. The concept that if one does not do circle in a specific way, that one is open to psychic attack or attack of energies or entities, I am not going to be able to say I've never experienced things like that. They do exist, but they respond in according to what we put out. Nervousness, insecurity. Doing ritual at a time at which you're distraught, unwell, unfocused, when you don't have your allies with you, you haven't thought about what you're doing ahead of time, you offer up frenetic energy like attracts like. However, even in that kind of scenario, we are creatures of this world. This is, in a sense, our domain. I don't mean domain in the sense that we dominate it. I mean domain in the sense that it is our, our place, our home, the thing we absolutely know. We know ourselves. We know our place more than any other person or any other entity can know it. And I believe that if you are mature enough to cast circle, try different ways of doing it, but do it from a place of your own confidence, knowing that I know who I am as Annie. 
I feel myself on this earth, the home in which I live. I control what's around me. I truly believe we are as safe as we think we are. I truly believe that we are our own fortress in this world, in this place that we belong. Psychic energies, entities of the spirit world that may visit this world or be attracted to us for some reason. They don't own this place. They visit it. They don't understand it. I truly believe that it comes to self Confidence. The self-confidence comes from self-knowledge. You don't just jump into casting circles immediately. You learn. And what you are not learning, I'm going to propose, is this is the way you cast a circle. Or this is how you do this thing, even if you're not casting a circle. What you are learning is, does that make sense to me? Does that resonate with me? Does whatever is me, whatever is my personal power and knowing, go, yeah, that works, got it. That's a tool I can use. And there's room to experiment. And the room to experiment, the freedom is because of you're knowing who you are. You're knowing who you are. Every time I have encountered something which at the first encounter has been off-putting, whether it was just mildly disturbing or frightening, what brought that to ground literally for me was I stand here on my own two feet, on my own turf, in my world fully in charge of my physical, mental, and spiritual self. That's a journey that comes before we ever cast a circle, before we ever, as a practitioner, take on magical work. That's what I offer to you who are new. Explore. Do not be afraid to explore, but explore from a place that your instinct will guide you. Does this feel right or wrong to you? In the middle of doing something, you go with the flow and react if something is not feeling right for you. I just wanted to put that out. I just feel strongly there is no... Nothing hangs over your head that is a threat of a ritual done wrong will in some way doom you or endanger you. And I believe that if that is something you were holding. It could be because you're still at an early enough stage you need to know better who you are. And that is as done, there's the tricky part, as much through work that is of the mundane learning about yourself, learning about the your psychology, your makeup, your persona, your confidence, your beliefs. It's more about knowing who you are. Circle, the work of magic. Everything that we do as an expression of that confidence is what is what we consider to be. In this pagan world we live in, the acts of magic and our rights. It comes from here. It doesn't come from out there. One of the things I think that's so tricky as a solitary who's learning from books and the internet, no matter how good those sources are, is it can be a little bit more difficult to learn this, to connect to this, to go through the work of discovering yourself and your own inner strength, your purity in the universe, more or less, the place that you are inviolate. That's a little more difficult to find on your own. It's much easier to find a book or a website that tells you, here's what you do in a rite, or here's a spell that you do, because it's like a menu that you follow. It is far more difficult alone to take on the work of introspection, self-knowledge, and self-confidence that has to be part of your path before magic and the work of rite has substance that holds and makes things happen and truly affects the change that you are hoping for. There's my thoughts on this. Twofold. It really stems from knowing yourself first. If you know yourself, you are inviolate in the universe. There is nothing, there is no one, there is no thing that is a threat to you. You have to have that knowing. You have to know, I am unique. 
I know who I am, I know who my place is, I know the energies I have chosen to work with. That's where your magic blossoms from. It's how you then project it outward to manifest change. The learning process does set you up for, this didn't work so well. In which case, you back off, you change, you react, you go with the flow, you trust your instincts. It's very tricky as a solitary to get to that know-yourself place that you work from to work your magics. You can't do wrong, is what I want to say, because you will always be working from the place of knowing. The place of knowing cannot be shattered. Does that mean because you are not there yet, because you are learning, that it means, well, I can't do this wider thing because I don't feel I'm at this place yet? On one hand, you could say yes, that this place is your spiritual responsibility to be there first and then to work outwards. For if that which you seek, you do not first find it within, you will not find it without. You can learn and go grow through that experience, though. It's an experiential process of learning to know yourself your powers, your abilities, the place that you are naturally in this world, what it is that's you, that is so uniquely you, that it cannot be touched. I guarantee you, every one of you completely and totally has that ultimate power within you. You're not going to make mistakes in your right, in the way that you do a working that is going to ever present you with problems. My viewpoint is the mistakes you will make is in not following your instinct, not doing the work to come to know yourself, respect yourself, and know your own center. The only error one can make, to my mind, is not to give thought to self in this process of experiencing all that we can do and all that we can impact and change. Very interesting topic and a difficult one to deal with on a, on a video. It's the kind of thing you can spend nights and nights and hours and hours with your groups and witch salons and your covens talking about. Where does our power come from? How do we know where we are pure and untouchable? That's the place our work comes from. Fascinating topic. I wish all of you powerful people mirth and reverence. Mary Parton.